everybody out there. Uh, my name is Christine, uh, and I am here in Venus Envy in Halifax. Um, very excited to be digitally, virtually hosting um, the book launch for Trini Finlay's myself a paper clip. Let me do the like, my like a, a YouTuber doing some like makeup showing off, uh, which is just published by uh, Goose, House, Goose Lane, uh, Ice House Poetry. Um, and we are so, so excited to also have uh, Nolan, Natasha, uh, and Anik McCaskill uh, joining us to read some poetry as well. It is such a great lineup. Um, if you have never been inside Venus Envy uh, here in Halifax, or maybe if you've never been inside Venus Envy Halifax since we moved to our new location um, earlier in July, I can give you a little bit of an intro about uh, what you would be, the space that you would be in were you here in person. Um, so uh, the new shop is beautiful. It has a lot of exposed brick. There's a really cute, cozy nook that's coincidentally right beside the poetry section. Um, and uh, what you would find inside the shop is uh, a lot of books and a bunch of sex toys. We're half a bookstore, half a sex shop, and a little bit of other stuff. Um, here as a exquisitely queer and trans space um, where we do a lot of things, including love and read a lot of poetry. Uh, and we do that here uh, on Barrington Street in Halifax, where we've existed since 1998. Um, and the space that we are here on is the unceded, unsurrendered territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Um, I think that land acknowledgements are kind of bullshit if you don't put some uh, thought and time and care into what that means to engage with the land that you're on and um, the indigenous peoples who are the traditional uh, caretakers of that land. And so um, because here we are here to celebrate Trini, who's based in Fredericton in New Brunswick, um, if anyone is looking for material ways to um, start engaging or um, material ways to support, there is a, a GoFundMe that's linked in our Venus Envy HFX um, Instagram bio. Uh, called Help Martha Support Gracie, which is a GoFundMe that could really use some, some love and attention. Um, it's for uh, the mom and daughter of Chantal Moore, who um, is an Indigenous woman who was murdered by Edmondston Police in New Brunswick in 2020. Um, and you can check that out. Um, I am here with like a whole stack of really great poetry books on my lap, as well as the stack of my paper clip. Um, and some of these uh, are from our first two intro readers. Um, but before we get into that, I wanted to give a really quick shout out to Goose Lane and just indie publishers in general. I don't know if uh, anyone has been on Twitter or reading the news and just heard what a rough time it is in the book publishing world. Um, in terms of supply chain, in terms of how COVID affects all of the ways that we like materially produce the books that we love to read. Um, but I think the publishers are really going through it as are indie booksellers. Um, but the indie publishers are like doing real good work. Um, and it's so wonderful for folks to show out and show up and, um, and support um, all of the great stuff um, coming out of them. So, we are going to start first with um, some poetry from Nolan Natasha. Um, we have here a real deep cut um, <laughs> <laughs> of batting practice. And uh, yeah, here, I feel like, uh, uh, and uh, this book, I Can Hear You, Can You Hear Me? Um, Nolan Natasha is a queer and trans writer living in Halifax, Nova Scotia. His poems have appeared in numerous publications, and he has been a finalist for the CBC Poetry Prize, Room Magazine's Poetry Contest, and the Atlantic Writing Competition. Nolan grew up in North York and the Faroe Islands. Take it away, Nolan. 
Amazing. Thank you so much for that. And it's so funny to see those chat books. I think it, I think actually the only place those chat, chat books are still available is the five that have been at Venus MV for the last 10 years. <laughs> Which, so, so race down and get your copy before it's too late. Um, I'm really so excited to be here um, uh, to read, to celebrate uh, the launch of Trini's new book. Um, and uh Sometimes it was having one of those days where I couldn't decide what to read. So I'm going to read a few poems from uh, my book, I Can Hear You, Can You Hear Me? And then I'll read some new poems as well. And I just decided that I would read the fall poems um, from this book since we are sort of smack dab in the middle of fall. I'll start with a poem called Thanksgiving. The only picture of us was taken from far away. I had just changed my name and the whole world seemed as new as us a few weeks Hung over every morning in your bright pink room, the white curtains dulling the sun only slightly, your cat mumbling until I got up and filled his bowl. When I came back to bed, his small mouth crunching from the kitchen, your face soft and creased. Nowhere to rush to for the first time. We had dinner plans, but during the day we slept late, drank coffee, and had sex in all your chairs. The food that night was the most delicious I've ever eaten. I don't mean this flippantly. Course after course, and I don't remember what we ate. Not really. Turkey, obviously, and stuffing, and some kind of a mash. I know I kept saying, oh my god, oh my god. And I don't know how, but I know that the next morning, after walking home from your apartment, my body humming through the cool air and grind of the streetcars and bundles of newspapers waiting on doorsteps, somehow. The sound of her voice on my answering machine, taking it all back, her apology, waiting there for me, pulled me backwards, made me misplace what had happened with you, made me put it in a category of things that will happen often to me, of things I thought would happen often. And I'm going to read um, a poem called Divining. I realized in going through this book that I, I've almost exclusively fallen in love in the fall. So, <laughs> so a lot of love poems take place in the fall. This is called Divining. Just when you think you know the color of the sky, you see the way it talks to the mountain. And then there are more shades of gray and blue in the windshield than stones in the sea, and you realize you know nothing, that knowing is nothing, that naming the colors is good craft but futile because you can't even say what you feel, and you can touch the gear shift but not her leg, so you look at the colors and say, wow, look at that, isn't that something else? And she tries to name the colors too and does much better than you, but because you aren't listening as hard as you're breathing, you won't remember what she said. But you will still see the colors and you will still feel your hand that is not on her leg. Niagara Falls. I was driving, you took over the stereo that Lucinda song I'd never heard, Lodestar too. We ate bad pizza, you beat me at skee-ball. We must have looked at the falls. I remember how nervous you were at the blackjack table, how I learned you're afraid of heights, handsome, in any t-shirt. How I dared you to charm the girl at the prize counter just so I could watch you. I held your hand, wanted to take your arm, it's almost impossible to imagine you, Ben, in that tacky motel, not yet my partner, no longer my friend, so newly my lover. The roar of the water, even when you don't hear it, it pours and pours, erasing the rock underneath. And then a baseball poem, because baseball is always situated in the fall in my head. Batting practice. I spent more time in the backfield than any other place, tossing the ball up gently with my right and swinging through with both hands. Sometimes Andrew would come outside with his glove and catch the ball as it fell from the sky. I wish my little sister could hit like that, he'd say. But mostly I'd stand alone, watch them like Roman candles, 
running across the grass 50 meters sometimes to where the ball had folded itself into the field, swinging hard back towards my house as if it were a crowd over and over. I wasn't training. I didn't understand training. My swing, a dream, stacking on others, bottom of the ninth, seventh game of the series, the World Series, crack, greatness. I'd tilt my cap, wave my hand. It just comes down to physical ability, my dad explained. A difference in upper body strength, men, women. My swing, a rubber band, expanding, and then snapping. I'm going to read a poem. If my, assuming my mother has figured out how to log in, I think she's watching. So I'm going to read a poem. Um, I'm from the Faroe Islands. I'm just opening my phone because of the timer. Um, I'm from the Faroe Islands, these tiny islands in the North Atlantic, and I uh, understand a lot of Faroese, but I don't speak it and I can't read it. And um, I actually thought I understood a lot of Faroese, and then I attended a lecture once in the Faroes about being transgender in the North Atlantic, and I did not understand a word of the lecture. And I realized that most of my Faroese really just comes down to like, pass the butter, how was your day? <laughs> That's kind of how much Faroese I understand. And I also noticed there's a festival there called Olasuga that takes, takes place every year. And basically the whole country puts on their very, very fancy national costume and gets drunk for a week. And at the end of the week, they all sing folk songs. And I've attended this, these folk songs singing many times, but don't understand the songs. And I asked my cousin, you know, what one of the songs was about. And I think I had sort of assumed because it was just a bunch of like very drunk Vikings singing that the theme was something, you know, beer and fishing boats and something like that. But uh, it turned out that it was this very beautiful, delicate idea about memories. And that made me want to learn more about the folk songs. Um, and so I started to try to translate them um, with nothing but a Faroese to English dictionary and occasionally asking my mom questions <laughs> by email. Um, uh, and I'm going to read one of these sort of, sort of kind of translations. But the truth is, I really have no idea if it's anywhere close to faithful to the original poem. And my poem is about the way Faroese sounds. And I think that's what the original folk song is about, but I'm not even sure. So this is called Mother Tongue. Uh, strong winds, heart, currents, blood, running steep as cliffs, tall cousins, how we speak. Children's hands make waves in a deep bath. Listen the spray in the harbor, battering whir of a storm on the mountain, how we speak to each other. The cascade, listen, a waterfall, white water, heavy boulders, playing mid-river July, how we speak. Merry echo of sheep calls, a bird yelling, something about trudliness, or maybe it was the word for sweater. Listen, the way we speak of a good hunt, thankful return, a ship's clanging bell, how we speak, a dance in the warm light of the living room, robes long, ballads swaying, beards, pink lips chapped by winter, how we speak. And I'll just check the time and then read maybe two tiny ones more. So. Um, during the pandemic, one of the greatest queer bars in history closed, um, The Beaver in, in Toronto, which was kind of a second home to me. And so this is a poem for The Beaver. It's called 1192 Queen Street West. Homos like chess pieces scattered under lights, not the familial colors of Christmas, but to the side. Pastel, queer greens and yellow, the hue of this drunkenness, our bodies, a mass assembled out of discarded limbs made beautiful by wanting. Our sweat cool against the night. More faces appear in the doorway, hands go up. Excited drinks salute their arrival. We yell, we are so very glad to see one another come home. One last one, this is called Ritual. My favorite part of the bar bat mitzvah is listening to a teenaged interpretation of Torah. Nieces, nephews, cousins hunched over the scroll, 
the way your back bends now towards the thing you were reading. In these rooms consecrated by desire, prayers lifted towards eroded altars and the snow falls in May, dressing the mountains as if it was still November. What is a miracle? I ask the kids, but they never text back. I wish I could sit now, listen to their breaking voices sing. Thanks so much for having me. My book is available at Venus MB, or you can order it online from a local bookstore. Thanks, Nolan. Oh, I always forget when I, when I host these, I have to like get it together. I always feel like I need maybe like 30 seconds to, you know, in between. Um, so next, uh, we are going to hear from Anique McCaskill, who has two gorgeous books of poetry, both available here, um, and also uh, a poem in Not Your Best Chew, uh, which has a lot of really great poetry, but including one by Anique that when I heard it read out loud, uh, recently reduced me to tears. Uh, so um, let me introduce Anique. Um, oh, and these wonderful books are called No Meeting Without Body. I'm really failing at this. Like, I could never YouTube. This is what <laughs> I'm just doing. Uh, and murmurations. Uh, Anique McCaskill's poems have appeared in journals and anthologies across Canada and abroad, including ARC, Canadian Notes and Queries, The Fiddlehead, Plenitude, The Stinging Fly, and Best Canadian Poetry 2019. Her debut collection, No Meeting Without Body, was nominated for the Gerald Lampert Memorial Award and shortlisted for the J.M. Abraham Award. Originally from southwestern Ontario, she now lives in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Thanks so much. Um, it's lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Happy publication, Trini. Uh, I'm very excited to read your new book. Um, Goose Lane has already sent me a copy, so I'm just, I've just been checking the mail and waiting for it as patiently as I can. Um, I'll be reading a few. Oh, wait. First, I need to back up because I wore a sweatshirt. I don't know if... Okay, there. Hopefully now you can see. Very important sweatshirt, not to rival with Nolan, but he asked for it, so... Um, protect trans kids. Nolan wants me to cross out kids and put in boyfriends, but I draw the line. Um, the theme of my book is protect trans boyfriends. So you can just uh, find that message in Murmurations available from Venus Envy, which is a really beautiful bookstore and sex store here in Halifax. We're so lucky to have you. Um, great to have you in the community. I'll just read a few poems from this. Magpies. Remarkable to our East Coast eyes. Quotidian pest to the locals. You say beautiful and spark derision. Their eyebrows raised like pinky fingers and the corners of their mouths twitching. Rarer still to us all these months later as memory relegated to our respective crevices of Canada. A pest, this distance, this longing. In memory, the bird's sleek feathers are still glossy in sunshine. Inky check marks against the whiteness of the sky, the mountains, their wings and tails iridescent, pulsing against the limits of spectrum, rippling our vision into mirage. You still say beautiful with conviction. The world won't know what to make of us either. Process. I like that pinot in your mouth. Are you sure you don't want to play in the movies? I'd watch those movies. The geese love the nightlife here, shun the days. Over the same sink where we brush our teeth, rinse our coffee mugs, the wine glasses. I cut the tulip stems with your Swiss army knife, bring them back to the world's order. Saw back. The rental car arches us over the highway. Music steaming off the dash. The controlled burned shadow rising on the left. Blackened trunks felled on the hills and bird's nest tumors sprung from the living. We simulate understanding, ears to the forest, 
and animals prickly hide, our eyes scanning the mustard letters on Parks Canada camouflage green, a gloss that damns our misgivings. Holocene. The universe gets a little heavy handed when you're around. The bow still green all these kilometers down river, two geese and their tuft of fledgling, proof that the universe was once the size of a gumball. Time is a rubber band, we joke. Nothing like looking over and seeing you driving. The song last night said it all. I hate that you don't think I belong to you. Oh, inverted world of forest threaded with highways, parking lots, light modeled through trees, the rush of the river, where sunshine makes glass marbles and glacier silt, a backdrop we won't think to miss. Moving east now, great black backed gull. We think we saw it. You were in the waves, your torso pressed to the board, letting go as they formed, their underbellies unrolling from the glint of post-dust sky to frosted glass, bits of froth casting fish phantoms over the ocean floor. After a brief dip, I never left the towel, the tan pages of a library book sticking to my fingers. You yelled out from the water, pointing, like any other gull, ordinary, its call swallowed by the distance, remarkable only for its size. We second guessed, the binoculars still under the passenger seat of your car, no nomenclature ready for our lips. We tried later in the bookstore, heads bent over the species guide, unfolded like a takeout menu in our hands. The bird at once singular and improbable for how clearly it appeared to us. And just two more poems. And then I'm really excited to hear Trini read. Catch Harbor. Post rain, the water spills like silk, calm like it's everyone's day off, but just Friday, our secrets slip into the future. We should be so lucky, yellow flowers sparkle in the grass along the highway, weeds more perfect than the armful of grocery store tulips I brought to you in February. I don't like to think about what frightens me, so I picture your eyes instead, and sometimes I can't hear what you are saying, but I know that it is beautiful, we drive and we drive. When we get out, the air is cool. Who could blame us? Who could have waited any longer? Pitch. The sky slipped itself into night shearling gloves, but what to do with our bodies? If I can leave my shame behind, I'll call it a win. There are so many sounds in the world we can't recreate with our voices, so we trust what the other means. When we reference a duck's quack, aiming for the exact note of her nasal questioning. Some of us are better at this than others, and like starlings, can fool multiple species with our confident imitations. Kindergarten classes make devotions of this exercise, which is mostly useless, but then there was only one way to respond when you told me how you felt your shoulders back, a tallish human length between us. I can never repeat the sound, but sometimes we still hear it. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, all right, that means that it is time for us to hear from you, Trini. I am so excited. I've genuinely book, been looking forward to this all week. Uh, when we got our copies here at the shop uh, and I received them and put them out on the shelf, if anyone who is watching uh, works or has worked at a bookstore, you might know there are like quiet times when you just pick up a book and you start flipping through it and then accidentally it's like 20 minutes later and you have not been giving great customer service to the other people uh, in the shop because uh, it just sucks you in. So um, I had that experience and uh, I'm really excited to hear you read from it. Um, and let me pull up, uh, oh, for God's sake. Um, I had a thing prepped 
it is no longer prepped. Uh, so I will quickly read from inside the book. Uh, Trini Finlay was born in Melbourne, Australia, while her Canadian parents were on a work exchange and grew up in the Beaches neighborhood of Toronto. Her poetry collections draw on her experiences as a queer writer, teacher, and mother. Finley's poetry has also appeared in chapbook form, You Don't Want What I've Got and Phobic, and in numerous anthologies and journals, including Breathing Fire 2, Canada's New Poets, Arc, Contemporary Verse 2, The Fiddlehead, Rain, The London Reader, The Malahat Review, Plenitude, and the University of Toronto Quarterly. A resident of Fredericton, Finley teaches English and creative writing at the University of New Brunswick. Myself, a paperclip, is her third book of poetry. Thank you so much, Christine. Um, it's so wonderful to be here. It's so lovely to have Venus Envy and to have um, Goose Lane co-hosting this event. Um, I want to give a shout out to my friends and family who are watching. Um, it's just so wonderful to be able to launch this book into the world, uh, especially a book that took quite a while to write um, and quite a while to revise as well. Um, it is a serial long poem, this book, Myself a Paperclip, and by that I mean it's a, a collection of poems that are all interconnected, and I, I wrote the book as um, meant to be read all together, um, not necessarily in one sitting, but as a, as a kind of single narrative, um, and it's about my experiences with debilitating mental illnesses and their treatments um, and the stigma associated with that. So I'm going to read a few uh, sections of this book. Um, and I'm just going to pause in between page breaks because there are, aren't always titles for um, each section. And so I'll just give a pause if I'm moving from one to the next. So I'm gonna start with adjusting the psychotropics. When we changed my meds, I woke up. Woke up for the first time in years. The friends said, this doesn't seem like a good idea. The mom said, don't waste away on us. The dad said, you're looking great these days. Can we get you a drink? When we changed my meds, I gave up booze, tried every flavor of hot and iced tea, took friends out for pedicures. The friend said, let's do this again. When we changed my meds, I knew joy. When we changed my meds, I knew grief. When we changed my meds, I woke up and blew up and gave up and threw up and stayed up all night wondering if I could be a teenager again. When we changed my meds, I leapt from the rock face. I swam myself young again, pink and smooth and milky. I swam myself fiercer and fiercer, queerer and queerer. The friends said, you're more fun when you drink. When we changed my meds, I woke up to the smell of Guinness brown ba bread baking, fundy mist on my lips. I dipped, slept, and wept, checked into the psych ward for more medication adjustments. I grew tired of the meds, of waking up and staying up and tearing up. When we changed my meds, I reread poems about love and tea, about women who cry uncontrollably in bathroom stalls. I filled books and books with the minutiae of psych ward life, some proof rock and alienation, lists of snacks, plants, patients, setbacks, fish tanks, board games, peachy film on dank couches, a catalog of anxiety in objects. The friends were silent. The mum said, let's try a new place for lunch. The dads were dead. The dads were always dead. When we changed my meds, I ate wholesome meals and sweated to the oldies. When we changed my meds, I walked up the stairs like a curious fawn. The friends were still silent. The mom said, come over for pie. The dead dads drank craft beer. When we changed my meds, I walked off a ledge backwards, certain, uncertain. When we changed my meds, I fell into a soft, mallow field. The friends we're no longer friends. The mom said, can you hold the baby while I pour the coffee? The family said, never a dull moment. When we changed my meds, I woke up 
grew up, swam to the edge of a roiling infinity pool, the St. Lawrence wavering just beyond the snow's bliss. There was frost on the railing and steam at my eyes, and I let the salt water heal me, not settling into the mineral abyss, not letting go. Everyone here says God bless, and I want to argue with them about that. Sometimes you just have to will yourself out of here. Like, have you ever wondered what these meds are actually doing to our brains? Will yourself out. Once you play croconol, you'll never want to puzzle again. Just brush off the toast crumbs and get your thumbs in shape. Puddles of milk rematerialize on the dining room floor daily. We are all ignoring the obvious. I grow old. I grow old. Olanzapine plus peanut butter toast plus zippers and pulled polyester give me psych ward camel toe. The guy in the Johnny shirt grabs two packets of social tea biscuits and asks me if I'm a queen too. Sometimes I say, his reply, sometimes means all the time. I've seen the moments of insidious intent flicker through the neurons fickle switches. Shred your napkin at every meal. Sprinkle it like salt on pureed squash or mashed potatoes. Shred your cuticles and do the same. That one over there shits himself. Him, yeah, he shits himself. She's trying to set my hand on fire. I'm not a doctor, but what I do to calm down is focus on my belly button when I breathe. You don't want what I've got. Alcohol swab to the temple, slight breeze on cooled skin. Tourniquet and a butterfly prick in the crook of the arm. Electrode to the temple. Count back from 10. Awake under hospital sheets, a heated flannel blanket. Aaron the day nurse. Hey there, sunshine, which is in my eyes, the needle prick. Lunch? I'd rather read, so it begins again. 26 words in sequence. Noun, noun, present participle, proper name, next clause. Who is Pip? Back to the beginning, repeat. Lunch, count back from 10. Electrode to the temple. This will only take a minute. It is not the future, but a slight breeze on cooled skin. Call it irrational, mercurial, wild pink moons. It's like you're not even trying. Plucking guitar strings all ticky tacky in a high, unlikely room, wistful, hysterical, and through the wall wisteria. If snow were just dust from the bed sheets, if action could make meaning, I might find my way, pushing it, pushing it back. Debts losses. I'm only good at beginnings. Lion-hearted, lion-drunk at a patio on King Street. A commitment, an engagement, the ordering of the world. I would take it, finishing someone else's sentences. Shingles at age eight. Blisters, swelling, an unresponsive itch. Skin as exhausted as my brain, as brazenly molested. Old peonies in a Clancy's bottle. One trick ponies. Sitting at a sloped table, uncorking. Listen, you crazy bitch. I don't know why I have these bumps on my head. It's one thing to miss your family or your friends, but to miss your old self? That's something else entirely. So, um, 
what's with your glove? Is it a Michael Jackson thing? You know that guy, the prophecy guy? Yeah, Nostradamus. He wrote in code too. The military is just like this place, a shit show. The doc said these lists would keep me organized, but I'm not very good at nerdy stuff. Here comes the queen bee. I'll shove something up your ass. Why did you leave me here without a mirror? Rejected embroidery projects. I stitch whimsy careful scenes for people who don't love me back. MSN logo, buy flag, Dr. Mario pills for the 90s kid who left on a work trip that winter and chose not to return. Sun, moon, and rising signs for the zodiac led trauma specialist who preferred her subtle cats. Understood. Whose hands will pick those finished hoops from the nearby dumpster? It's all going to light up eventually. Whose lungs will cave because of the fire? Oh, I eat a cloth, stretched and clamped and stabbed. I didn't mean to hurt you, to rebirth you as something harsher than yourself. We all know the needle pushes away the pain. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to Ross Leckie for editing this collection. Um, I've known Ross for many years and it is in fact because of Ross that I met Nolan and Anique because Ross um, organized for years a poetry weekend in Fredericton and I first met both Nolan and Anique at a poetry weekend probably six or seven years ago. Um, and I feel very fortunate to have met them. Um, and I feel very fortunate to Ross um, for, for taking on this project, which wasn't a sort of conventional poetry book. So thank you to Goose Lane, uh, everyone at Goose Lane and to Ross in particular for editing this collection. And thank you to my amazing friends and family who have just honestly saved my life in multiple ways, um, especially my son, Sebastian, who is um, the most incredible human I know. Thank you so much. What? Hot damn. A great way to spend an evening together. Um, to all of you out there in the internet uh, streaming, if any of you want to um, buy myself a paperclip or any of the other um, books that I've clumsily displayed, um, from us uh, at Venus and Me Halifax directly. Uh, you can come in in person if, uh, if you are in the Halifax area, uh, or you can get in touch with us directly. You can send us uh, an Instagram or Facebook direct message. We're at uh, Venus NV HFX. Um, you can give us an email or a, a call. Um, our website uh, is run through um, the Venus NV in Ottawa. So um, if you wanna order through us, get in touch with us directly. Um, thank you again so much, Trini. Trini, thank you, Nolan. Thank you, Anik. Uh, thank you, Goose Lane um, and Oriana, who uh, did fantastic tech setup. Um, and thank you to all of you for, um, for watching and for joining us virtually. Um, hopefully one day meet again in person soon. Um, so I'll wrap up for the night. Thank you so, so much. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thanks, Christine. Good night, everyone. Congrats, Trinity. Good night.